welcome back. Uh, I got a project to share with you guys today. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to do these, um, but I'm going to give it a try and try to do it in one go. It might take a couple of videos to do it. I just will have to see how I get on. <clears throat> what I wanted to do was share um, some ideas for um, people who are just starting out with making junk journals for ideas on some quick and easy pockets and tuck, sp tuck spots. Um, using items that you've already got in the house. <clears throat> Here's one. I've used a 6x9 envelope and a um, CD envelope for this one. And what my thinking was on this is if this is your journal page, you could adhere that and this is going to flip up. You've got a, a little journal card that will come out of that. Here <clears throat> you've got a pocket. That opens. You've got another little tuck spot. You've got a belly band here. And then this is another pocket. <clears throat> so that's that's your journal page and that's how that would be incorporated in your journal. So I'll set that to the side. That's one idea. This idea came from the rebookery. She um, took three business envelopes and I'll show you how to fold those and it'll create like a waterfall and then um, you've got pockets in each of these plus you've got a place you could either add um, some of these are big enough you could do a, a large photo or here you could just do some journaling. Um, but then you've also got the little pockets on the side. So that's another idea. Uh, this one is using... Um, sorry, I got ahead of myself on this one, guys. And I, I actually already glued the piece down, so sorry about that. This is a 3x3 three three envelope. And... This one is a three and a half by five and a four and a quarter by six and a quarter envelope. And what I've done here, I've used all three of those, and this is what uh, I've got a, a place here, a little pocket there. There's a pocket, a pocket here. And this is your journal page. You're gonna you're gonna glue that flap onto your journal page. Then you've got a pocket here. That opens up. I've created another tiny pocket there just for fun. Here I did a little um, tuck spot, so you could put something in there. And then there's another big pocket on the side here. And then this would flip over. You could either add another pocket here if you wanted, or I, I thought it'd be nice for a photo and then do some journaling. So that's how that one would work in your journal. And then this last one is um, using the little coin envelopes. These are four by four and a quarter. And I'm not too sure how easy these are going to be to get in the U.S. I personally don't recall seeing them except at Staples. Um, but, you know, if you can't find that, you could easily use something else. Um, and, it, it, you know, you could just tweak it slightly. So this, what I've done here is this is going to have, it's got a journaling card on the side. Opens up and... You could do some writing here. You've got a pocket here and a pocket here. So you've, you've got three pockets in this version. Okay, so we're going to get started. And I think we'll start with this one with the business envelopes. Um, so the first thing you want to do with this is... I'll set that over to the side. Is just get these. Um, you want to get those sealed. And I just thought I'd, I'd do all this with you guys because, um, well, we just may as well do it together, haven't we? 
Um, so get all those sealed up and then, then we're going to just take the paper trimmer and trim off the very edge of that. Okay, so I, it doesn't matter which side that you trim from, but I probably would trim on the other side of where you've, um, you know, not the side that seals up. I just think it, it might, it might work a little bit better. And you're only going to take just the very, very edge off. And I, you can do these individually, but I'm going to try to stack them together because I want to make sure that it all comes out um, the same that I'm trimming off. Okay, so now we've done that. What you do now is you just space these. I'd say that's probably about an inch apart. And then you're just going to come back and do the same up here. And then line that up. Make sure it's all lined up where you want it. And then take your bone folder and um, crease that down there. Now what I decided to do is this top one I like to go ahead and put my pattern paper down and then I'm going to run a stitch. So um, I need to point out, I'm not going to give you guys measurements on the, on the papers. The reason being, if you have the distance between these larger than what I've got, it's going to vary from person to person. So there's no point in me even, you know, telling you. You just... Just measure that. I always take about a quarter of an inch off of the the height and the width. Um, so I've done that. I've already pre-cut um, my papers. So I'm just going to get this um, top one glued down quickly. Oh, sorry guys. I thought I had everything ready. You know what? I'll just use this really quick. I finally got me some of that Cosmic Shimmer um, glue. It's got the little fine tip. I've been after that stuff for a long time and unfortunately that's all I got handy here. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to try to center that. There we go. Now, at this point, once you've got that piece down, that's when I go through, and I'd say about a quarter of an inch from the top, I run that through the sewing machine. You don't have to do that. If you want, you could just, um, you could glue this, but I've never done it that way. I'm just going to be honest with you. I've, I've, I've always run it through the machine, so I will be back. Okay guys, so now what you're going to do is you're just going to measure your designer paper for each little flip and get that put down. They're really, really simple, but these are so cute in, uh, in your junk journal. And I really like putting this on the back cover because it, you know, it, it does have a little bit of bulk to it um, and I think it just fits really nice on the back cover. Just trying to go through and use up uh, some of my stash and uh, I'm working on a couple of journals right now that um, I think these will look really good in. Um, this one is some off authentic. Um, it's a carousel and I've had that, gosh, for ages. Um, I purchased that at Tuesday morning. 
probably a year and a half ago, and uh, I still haven't used it. But I'm making a start, and then this one is going into a journal that's really not... It's going to be one of the tomes, but as it stands, I don't think I've got a theme in mind for it. I just really wanted to have... Um, a lot of patterns and um, textures in it. I don't know. Um, it's presenting me with a little bit of trouble, if I'm honest. Um, it's. I'm usually working with a theme, and this particular journal. I don't uh, have, I'm not using a kit, I'm just going to try to take um, all of my patterns and I love this this paper pack so I thought well this would be fun if I can work it in. So I'm, that's kind of, I guess if there is a theme it's, it's that, it's just going to be a lot of just um, prints and uh, patterns and then you know various pages but I'll let you know how this how it gets on. It's like I said, I'm really <coughs> finding it difficult because when you're working with a digital kit, you're you've got a lot of inspiration coming from the um, pattern from the kit, and so yeah, this it's I don't know. I'm just really struggling with it, but it's one of those things. I've got the cover done and. And now I'm just working on the inside, so I like how that's come out. I really love these papers. I love this denim. I wish I had more of that. <laughs> don't have it. I purchased that at Hobby Lobby, and uh, somebody uh, I spotted yesterday had done a USA journal, and it was fantastic. And I thought, oh, I really wish I had stuff to do one, but I don't. So there you go, guys. Now, obviously, you know, you can embellish this with with some lace up here is probably once I get it glued down and what you'll do is just I get my paper you'll just want to glue glue this back envelope and then secure that and then you got a nice little waterfall I really like those I think those are cute so that's one way to use some envelopes so we'll set that to the side and try to get on with another one here. Um, this one, I'll go ahead and do this one because I think this one will be pretty quick. And then I may have to uh, empty my SD card. I'll have to see. Okay, so this one, yeah, this one is very simple. Um, you probably don't even need a tutorial for this, but I'll do it anyways. Um, I knew I needed one, two, three, four, five pieces of coordinating um, scrapbook paper so you'll want to cut that and obviously it's going to vary uh, depending on your size and then this one I only trimmed the edge of this top one because I want I wanted a side so I'm just going to grab my cutter here and we'll just trim that and you're just going to take just enough so that you could get something in there and then you'll need to do a little dollop of glue on that corner to hold that. So we'll do that first and let that sit to the side. That's very good glue. It's very sticky. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. And then this, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there. What you'll do is just take the bottom of the first envelope and put it right up to that crease of the flap and the same with that third one. These sometimes it's kind of cool to have the print to leave that but uh, for the journals that I'm making and I don't really want to see it so let me make sure I got those all even because when that closes I want that to be Oh, I glued that down. Yeah, that's right. I put... <clears throat> so, I think this is going to be the front, so I'm going to use that one. 
Now the other thing um, I did on this one is I machine stitched all of those, but I won't do it this time. But obviously, um, if you want to add that extra detail and it does make a difference, stitch it now before you put that down because you'll risk closing your pocket if you try to stitch it once you've glued it down. And I do, I do think it looks nicer if you've got the machine stitching on it. So, so that's going to be my front. And I'm going to have this here. So you guys can see, it's just really, these are super easy to do. Um, but it kind of takes the stress out of trying to measure because when you're first starting out, I, I know I really got, I was never great with math and I really got messed up with some of the measurements and you just, you just kind of want to get on and get a journal made and it, if you get bogged down sometimes with, um, with too much measuring and you know, stress you get stressed out, and that's not good. We don't want that. So, this is just a really quick and easy thing. To add some interest in in your journal. This last one, like I said, these these aren't finished. They look really plain, but you you just go back then and you can do your stitching on it. You can add some flowers and some trim. And this one I put, I did the stitching, and then I put some seam binding under it and did, a, well, I first glued it down and then I did a little bow. So that's going to be really pretty in, inside a journal, I think. paper a little bit too long so I'm, that's why I'm going back to make sure that those don't get glued shut. So there you go and there's our journal page again. That's going to get glued and like I said if you want to have another pocket go ahead and just glue glue it in as the way you want it there and then that's going to open up so you've got oh, where did I Oh gosh, I didn't do the wrong one, did I? Ah, it's opening on this side. Yeah, I messed that up. Be aware of that, depending on how you're going to put this in your journal. Um, so that's going to open on that side. That'll flip there. So you're just going to want to put your glue in that center bit. So there you go. So that's another idea. <coughs> And then on to this one. I love how this one's come out. This one's really was a lot of fun. <coughs> First thing you're going to want to do on here is let's close that. And then I am going to have that on the back. I just fold this over. This is a 6x9. So fold that over to about there and you know it's all down to you if, if you want it to come over further you obviously can but that way you just want to make sure you got enough room for this and I better check that actually yeah I'm gonna have to bring that in a little bit more the reason being my journals I never go over five and a half on my page so I better bring that in a little bit further so that I'm sure that's going to fit on one of my journal pages. And I'm not worried about that. I'll come back and cover that up there. You know what? I've cut all this. See, this is me getting ahead. 
Okay, that's fine. Yep, that's fine. I've got that right. So there again, just measure out and cut your designer paper. Now I'm going to go get the print uh, paper cutter. Let me trim off those edges real quick so we got a little pocket in there. Let's take a little bit more off of that because I want to make sure that's going to fit in this journal I've got in mind for this. Yeah, that'll be fine there. So here, I'm just going to... Um, Glue that down. I This one I did a script stamp before I started gluing anything down. This one I'm not going to because it's a different look altogether. So, I don't know if I'll end up distressing it. I just, like I said, this, this journal that I've, I'll just show you guys which one it is because the, the fabric and the cover is amazing. Um, this is it. It's the Tim Holtz fabric and it's that watercolor and it's just presenting such a problem for me. I've got the Sari Silk. I'm really happy with that because it pulls all the colors out. I knew I did not want to do a collage on this one. I wanted to keep it simple. Love it. Absolutely love it. But it's the inside that is just doing my head in because I don't want to use a journal kit. Um, I don't, number one, I don't have anything that's coordinating with that. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just do it as textures and design and, lot, you know, it'll be a lot of writing, but obviously I'll still have some tucks and pockets. But I just, I don't know. I'm really, really struggling with that. I don't know if, if you guys get that way on certain projects. So it's kind of like, okay, I'll just keep working around. I'll sit it to the side. Because sometimes if I sit things to the side that are giving me trouble and just walk away from it for a week, a couple of days even, I come back with fresh eyes and then I can, I can get on with it. But um, I'm hoping anyways that that's going to be the case but yeah that one's really it's on my mind a lot <laughs> at the moment because I love it and I don't want to mess it up it's just such a beautiful beautiful journal I don't know like I told you guys um I probably make things harder on myself than I need to, but I keep, um, you know, I, I'm always trying something new, and um, it doesn't always work out, and that might be the case on that one. I hope it's not, but it, it might be. All right, so I've got those down. Now, I did not cut. I'm going to need to go back and cut. Let me see if I can get a couple pieces of paper. I'll be uh, be right back. I want to make a belly band for that and then another little tuck spot. So bear with me, guys. more papers. See, no matter how I try to be prepared, <coughs> I'm not always, uh, it doesn't always work right. I think I'll, uh, Oh, I don't know. Let me see. 
It's a very uh, busy pattern these are, but I do love these. I think I'm going to use that there. I didn't know if I should, but I will. Let me see. <clears throat> so that's a six inch. And then I'm just going to do like a little, a little tuck spot there. And I might, let me get my punch out and I'll do a little bit of the decorative edge. nice to have these um, edge punches. I'd, I'd like to have a few more. It's um, They may have such a pretty... Well, I'm going to trim a little bit more off of that. Because I like that pattern and I don't want to cover all of that. So that I'm just going to glue that down. That way we've got another little tuck spot there. to have a lot of punches but I've kind of downsized them. Um, you've got, you know, they've come out with so many of the framelits shapes now that, uh, but there's nothing easier than the punch. i got to say I got rid of a lot of them thinking, oh I'm going to switch over to the framelits, but it's much easier to use a punch for sure. Uh, so yeah, I kind of regret that. Um, at one time I had a lot of them from Stampin' Up. Okay, here I want to do a belly band, and I think I'm going to try to find that paper because that is really pretty. I got a little piece of it. I'm just going to put down there. Yeah, I like that, so... So we'll let those dry. Oh yeah, get this. Um, okay, now what I did with this, um, and I, sorry, I got ahead again. Um, with this, you're going to want to put a, a real thin line of glue to close that because we're going to make the opening on the side here. So let's just trim that down just slightly again. going to take the very edge off of that. Okay, so we've got this glued and now we're just going to um, flip that over and glue that to that back envelope. I'll open that back up so you guys can see it a little bit better. You're just going to glue it to that back there. Sometimes these CD cases aren't completely straight. So, Okay, so there you go. That's going to open now on the side so that you can make your little um, you can make your journal card that's going to fit in there like I've done. And then I, I like to have a little tab, that way it's easier to get it in and out. And then you're going to have, you know, this pocket, this tuck spot, you've got your belly band, and then you've got another pocket here. 
and then this will get glued down to the journal page. And on mine, I'll probably come back and do something on here just to give that a bit more interest because that's a little bit plain like that. So I'll probably stamp it with something and then do a little bit of distressing. I'm not going to do a whole lot of distressing for this particular one. And then you, you could either go back over this with the <coughs> script stamp or in this case, I think I'm actually going to, I'm going to put some more pattern paper over that just to brighten that up a little bit. And you could put another pocket there as well. So there's another idea, guys. And let me see. We've got our last one. And that is this one. I'm going to go wash my hands and I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. I had to empty my uh, SD card. So we've got the last one here and that's taking three envelopes and we're just going to create a pocket here, a pocket here, and this is optional. You can do a tiny one here, a little tuck spot there, and then another pocket here so that when you have your journal page here, you're going to adhere that flap to the edge of the page like so with some glue. Um, sorry, I'm fumbling around here um, with some glue like that. And sometimes I'll stitch this in a way that you can make that into a little tuck spot and then other times I'll just cover that flap up all together. But it's just kind of a nice, a nice little pocket for you. Alright, so let's get started. I've cut this. Like I said, I made a mistake of going ahead and um, gluing this down. I don't know. So <laughs> we'll pretend I hadn't done that. So we'll start with the back one and get this um, the big piece. I've already cut this um, to the size I know I need it. <coughs> had to have a cup of coffee. I've only had, I think, a cup and a half this morning. So I'm going to be sipping on some coffee while we make this one. That's a little bit excessive on that glue. Sometimes it just comes out really, really heavy. So with your flap up there, um, because you're going to use that flap for the other one, just glue this down. Try to get that centered. And that glue back there is going to close that opening for you. So that way when you... When you tuck something in here, it's not going to slide all the way through. So be mindful of that. You've got to close that somehow. And I see I need to add a little bit of glue here because this envelope's kind of come undone. So just add a little dollop there. This is why I end up with so much glue on my hands is because I'm getting too much out. I told you guys, I'm very messy when I'm crafting, so. Alright, so we've got that down. Um, this, I'm going to keep that loose. I'm going to go ahead and put my um, scrapbook paper to the front because I know when I, when I glue this, uh, when I attach it, it's going to be, I need that flap left open. So, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and glue this first. Sorry, guys. Let's glue this to this first. Wait, what have I done? Yep. I just, ooh, gosh, I'm glad I caught that, guys. Let's glue this first because then you can come back over it with some paper. <coughs> I 
I don't think I've cut enough paper looking at it. I needed another piece, but we'll do that. Alright, so let's get that attached to that flap. That way when we open it, it'll take the whole flap with it. And then I'll have to come back now. I've got to cut another piece of this. <coughs> Yep, you think you've got it all ready, and sure enough, uh, I forgot I needed two pieces, so, but that's fine. We'll, um, <clears throat> okay, so now that should be stuck together pretty good. We're going to come back and glue a piece to the front and then one on the back just to cover that up. Actually, I've been kind of going back and forth with my glues. I, I prefer this, but I try not to use it when I don't have to because you guys know it's so expensive. But um, the tacky glue I got when I tried that earlier, it seeped through um, one of my pages and ended up ripping. So that I better just stick with this, I guess. Oh, I do so love these colors. Gosh, they're beautiful. Beautiful colors there. Alright, and I'm just going to glue that one there. You'd think I would learn uh, to keep this upside down. I had a little, um, my pencil holder, I had that cleared out to where I could prop this upside down, but I've got it so full now, I can't uh, fit it in there, so. Okay, so there we go. That's looking better. And then this one, I'm not going to bother with covering up that um, top flap because I really like the white contrasting with the red and the blue. But I think I will do what I did before, and that was put some linen thread behind that and tie it. So very quickly, let me just grab some of this. Make sure I got all these kind of centered. Okay. Now I'm going to put just a little bead. Actually, I'll put it on this so I know. Oh, gosh. That's the one that hasn't been opened. <laughs> it's not going well, guys, honestly. Uh, I hope this tutorial comes out all right, because I feel so scatterbrained today. It feels like everything I'm trying to do has just been a mess. <laughs> but I guess it's just going to be one of those days. So, All right, let me get a bit more glue and get that down, and then I'll come back and tie that in the front. See, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this mess. Oh. Yeah, I'm getting super, super frustrated with my glue supply at the moment. I think it's time to go ahead and make another purchase. Um, I love the Fabri-Tac and that 3-in-1, but when it gets to the end of its life at the bottom, ah, it drives you mad uh, trying to get the last little bit out of it. tie that off in a knot and then I'll come back and tie a bow in it. Yeah, I don't know. Some uh, 
today's just been everything. It just feels like everything's been such a challenge. And I suppose it's just uh, the tutorials still aren't coming that natural to me. I, um, I told you guys I want to work on trying to get my space a little bit organized differently so that um, I like to have my camera positioned so that you know you guys can see me actually working and, and I don't have to keep moving around because I'm so limited at the moment which is why I've really not <clears throat> spent a lot of time doing tutorials because it is very very difficult to try to work in this little bitty space for you guys but I've tried to prep as much as I can beforehand to make it go smoothly for you because I know there's nothing worse than just dead time when I'm over trying to shuffle through things and find it. So I do apologize. It didn't go as smoothly as I'd hoped. Um, sorry, I needed a drink. But I hope this has been useful um, for some of you who are just getting started. That you feel like you, you know you've learned something that you know to make it just a little bit easier for you because it is. It's very overwhelming when you start out in this community because there are some so talented um, so many talented people in here and <clears throat> the level that they're at can make it very intimidating to get started so I just wanted to offer some quick and easy ideas for you guys I hope I hope you've gotten something out of it um, and just a little reminder what we ended up coming up with. This one, I already think I'm going to come back. This is part of the same paper stack, but I'm not happy with that. It's too much of a contrast because everything else is blues and reds and a little bit of purple. So I already know I'm going to come back and change that. So that's going to, and then it's too plain. I've got to do some work on that. I'm super happy with these. Those have come out. I, I just love those. I think they're really, really nice in a journal. And then um, here is our, let me sit this stuff out of the way. I seem to have lost another one. Sit those out of the way. Happy with these. This just, you know, I'm going to have to make my little journal card in there. And that will be ready to go. And this one I think is probably my favorite. That linen thread against the the denim. That's, I really, really like that. That's come out beautiful. But I liked it on this as well. What I did here, I just, um, I told you this paper kit was one I got at um, Tuesday morning and it had a sheet of the coordinating stickers. I'm not a fan of stickers but these are so cute and uh, very vintage looking and I I thought, well, I want, you know, I'm trying to use up the stuff that I've got. So I thought, oh, I'll stick these on there. And I really like how that's come out. And here it's got Wonderment. And then Live for Today, Will Dream Tomorrow. That's really, really pretty. So that was fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm anxious to get started on this um, carousel. I haven't designed the cover for this which is very unusual you guys know for me I usually start with the cover and then um, take it from there but I'm kind of doing this one in reverse order so I'm starting on the embellishments first that one's I, I, that's bugging me I'm gonna have to get that changed um, so yeah uh, I've got to get started on this cover for this and start printing out some papers for it and then hopefully I can get to work on that journal but thank you guys so much if you've got any questions you know leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can I'm really apologize I've started having to go through each video lately because I'm not <clears throat> getting notifications of the comments after it seems to be about after maybe a week. Um, I don't know if this is typical of, of YouTube, but I don't seem to get notification of any comments after a video is about a week old. So I apologize if I haven't um, acknowledged your comment on my video. I don't 
I really try to work to um, to make sure you know I acknowledge everybody's because I appreciate it so much. But if if you feel like oh I you know she just totally ignored my comment, I haven't done that. I, it's just I am not being notified, so I do apologize for that. When I've got time, I do try to sit down and go back through and see if there's any that I've overlooked. But um, but thank you guys so much. Like I said, if you've got any questions about this, I'm, I think it's pretty straightforward. But if there is anything I can help with, please just leave a, a comment and I'll get back to you. I hope you guys are having a great start to the week. And I will see you back here very soon. Take care. Bye.